Greetings, vinyl community. Well, here we are halfway through the first month of the new year. Um, I hope you're all enjoying a prosperous 2024 so far, and we'll continue to do so on into the indefinite future. I want to show the first records that I've scored in the year of 2024. I haven't yet shown the last records that I scored in 2023, so that'll have to wait. Uh, except I do want to give a special shout out to this new album, Illusion of Consistency by Surplus 1980. Uh, Surplus 1980 is the project of Mo Stiano, formerly of Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, so that gives you a, a point of reference. It's definitely in that same world. This is progressive art post-punk, um, somewhat noisy, complex rock music. Um, it's got a distinct RIO flavor to it, so if you're into bands like Henry Cow, Universe Zero, Art Zoid, Art Bears, and so on, this may very well be up your alley. And on this album, as we learn from uh, this splendid lyric sheet insert. Uh, Mo is joined by Melanie Murphy on guitar and bass and Bill Walter on uh, synthesizer and guitar and uh, whatever he might put his fingers to, as well as guests like Fred Frith. There's more of that RIO flavor. Uh, Carla Kilstead is on here, the wonderful Amy X Newberg and many others listed here on. The album is pressed on this delightful sort of fried egg effect vinyl. And as if the fried egg for your turntable weren't enough, you also get a CD copy of the album packaged right, right with it, as well as a download code. So if for whatever reason you can't rip the CD to your digital listening device, you're covered. Um, wonderful packaging. It's got that insert. It's got the colored vinyl. It's got all the multiple formats. There's a rude message inside here, so fuck you, Mo. Um, great. Surplus 1980, and you can get that on Bandcamp, and uh, I'll put a link below. Uh, from my local record store, The Bargain Bin. Mahler, das, Lieb, das Knaben Wunderhorn. Uh, das Knaben Wunderhorn was, as a book, a collection of German folk poetry and songs collected in the early 19th century by the poets and writers Achim von Arnim and Clemens Brentano. And Mahler, as a composer, was fascinated with these works. He uh, drew from this collection throughout his composing career, and uh, some of his symphonies are known as the, his middle period symphonies are known as the Wunderhorn symphonies because he uh, drew on the poetry from this collection. Uh, but this is a cycle of 12 songs, uh, settings of poems from the collection, and the poems all feature uh, military themes, songs of soldiers going out and getting killed. Um, it, it alternates between that and, uh, oh, let's frolic upon the green in the uh, Bavarian uh, countryside sort of songs. Or in some songs, they alternate within the song. They might have the man singing, as this is a male and a female alternating vocal parts. A uh, man might sing about being uh, locked up in the prison for whatever military crime he committed, and then the, the woman is singing, oh, I'm frolicking out on the hillsides in the wonderful Bavarian countryside. Um, it starts off with a zombie song, uh, Revelga, or Reveille, um, in which the soldier is killed right at the beginning, and uh, ends up coming back to life, picking up his drum, using the drum to summon all his uh, dead comrades and winning the uh, battle. So it's a zombie battle song. How can you beat that? 
Um, well, you can. It's got songs about uh, singing contests between animals. It's got a song about children starving to death. All that good stuff is on here. This is a 1966 recording by Janet Baker, mezzo-soprano, uh, Geraint Evans, baritone, and London Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Wynn Morris. This is on the Angel label and comes with all the words in German and English so you don't miss any of those cool zombie references. Um, at the same time, I found uh, from a completely different world, J.G. Johnson and Kai Winding, trombone duo, um, not performing just as a duo, but with a, a full band, J and Kai, not K, but Kai. It's close. They fit nicely in the alphabet there. This is a uh, 1957 release. Six Eye Columbia. Lots of familiar uh, standards and show tunes, as well as uh, an original by each of the trombonists. They've got uh, You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To, The Song Is You, In the Wee Small Hours of the Morning, if you got that Frank Sinatra vibe. Uh, Great title for the composition by J.J. Johnson, Tromboniums in Motion. Uh, violets for your furs, it's wonderful. Not a bad deal for 49 cents from the bargain bin. Um, from the Incredible String Band, the first solo album by Robin Williamson, the more spacey half of the Incredible String Band. This is from 1972, and his first solo album, Murr, which followed uh, his partner Mike Herron's first solo album, uh, Smiling Men with Bad Reputations, which had come out the pre preceding year. Uh, this got relegated to Island Records' budget label, so it's got the Help catalog number. This is Help and it has a cover that was obviously intended to be a gatefold, but they, the budget, I guess, wouldn't extend to it. So you've got one of uh, the kind of unusual situation where a wraparound picture is on a single pocket album cover. And some copies of this have lyrics on the inner sleeve. My copy does not. This is a a British inner sleeve, so it's apparently what did come with it, but no lyrics, no credits, no nothing, no song titles except on the labels of the record itself. And this is a really marvelous album. If you like the more spooky, mystical, and spacey side of the Incredible String Band, it's definitely here, not being leavened by the more kind of upbeat things that Mike Heron would contribute to the partnership. So that's one that's been on my radar to find for quite a long time, so I was very happy to run into that. Um, at the same time, I picked up this one from the world of Harry Parch. Of course, Harry Parch is famous for having invented a special kind of tuning where instead of having the standard 12 note, having the, the octave, the musical octave divided up into 12 notes as we do in standard Western music, he divided the octave up into 43 notes. So his notes are much closer together than the notes in traditional tonal music. And he didn't do that just out of uh, a desire to be different or you know, just being avant-garde, he had a theory behind it, and he wrote a lengthy book, Genesis of a Music, explaining why his tunings are the way they are and how the ratio of vibrations uh, led him to uh, come up with this combination of frequencies that are the scales in Harry Parch's uh, music. Now, of course, in order to accommodate that music, he had to invent entirely new instruments. So we see some of those here. This is uh, on the CRI label. This was, I believe, originally released in 1964 as a mono LP, and it was the first, I think, LP 
recording of um, of all Parch's music to be released. But this copy is a 1979 reissue in rechanneled stereo. And I ask you, rechanneled stereo in 1979, by then I thought we would have been past that. It's really not a good thing to do to recordings, but there you go. It does come with a nice um, um, insert here with photographs of the various instruments and explanations of how they work and Harry Parch himself there looking rather dapper for a hobo kind of guy which uh, is how he did live for a certain part of his life so music of Harry Parch from 1974 duo album by Charles Austin and Joe Gallivan uh, Charles Austin is playing soprano, alto, and tenor saxophones, flute and alto flute, oboe, and English horn. Joe Gallivan is playing percussion and Moog synthesizer. This is very free. Uh, it's on the man-made records label, and according to Discogs, this appears to be the only release on the man-made records label out of Florida. So that is apparently Charles Austin, um, who was a Florida native, apparently his private label, and the only thing that he put out. So some very um, out there free jazz, very cool to listen to. And uh, found that in the, uh, the bins alongside George Duke. The Aura Will Prevail from 1975. Um, George Duke was still playing in Frank Zappa's band around this time, and uh, there are two Frank Zappa compositions on here, or one that's actually a Frank Zappa composition, Echidna's Arf, which had been the previous year on the Roxy and Elsewhere album, and also the song Uncle Remus, which has lyrics by Frank Zappa, but the music by George Duke, and that had been previously, also in 1974, on Frank Zappa's Apostrophe album. Found this in the bins for five bucks with As Is written on the price sticker, so I was, you know, worried that maybe there's some uh, problem with it that I couldn't see. I could see some faint hairlines on it that didn't look at all like they'd affect play. Uh, this sounds great. There's nothing wrong with it at all. <laughs> it's not warped. It's not scratched. It doesn't skip or make any undue noises. Great copy for five bucks. The aura will prevail. Uh, George Duke is accompanied by Alfonso Johnson on bass. Uh, Ndugo Leo Chancellor on drums, also Ayrto plays percussion on a couple of tracks, and he's got some lady backing vocals you can see there. So, good fusion funk, lots of cool electronics from George Duke. Love that album. And uh, just arrived in the Dawson domicile is the 2023 Blue Note Classic reissue of Heavy Soul by Ike Quebec. Fantastic uh, mainstream tenor sax player with a very cool edgy tone with just enough rasp but still sweet. Uh, the title says it all. This is just great funky soulful jazz. Freddie Roach on organ. I love some jazz organ. Milt Hinton on bass and Al Harewood on drums. Uh, he does Nature Boy. Um, he does Brother Can I Can You Spare a Dime. Um, really some really burning uh, in, uh, originals. So uh, Ike Quebec, Heavy Soul. Finally, this one's so new I haven't even played it yet. This is an album that I sort of looked around and went, I thought I had this album already. I looked in my CD box. I thought I had it on CD. No, I don't have this CD. I don't have it in my vinyl stacks. I don't have this album, and I thought I did. Can. Live in Brighton, 1975. Um, I have the similar album, Live in Stuttgart, which is like almost the exact same cover. And this is on what they call, it's got a 
gold inner sleeve. Oh, and I didn't even notice it's got a, a download code. So I can do my digital version. This is pressed on what they call Inca Gold Vinyl, 3LP set from CAN, the Krautrock Stalwarts. And that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Be well. Talk with you, talk with you again soon. I'll try to learn to talk in the interim. Bye-bye for now.